Yesterday, President Trump released an unprecedentedly detailed plan on how to address the long-standing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Both the content and context have provoked diverse reactions and raised many questions about whether this plan has the potential to bring the parties closer to peace. This is the latest. I'm Lucy Kurtzer Alamogan. Was there anything new and surprising in this plan? I think the plan uh, took some people by surprise in the sense that it did nod towards a two-state framework. This is something that had not necessarily been taken for granted. It was a plan that is weighted very heavily in favor of one side, specifically the Israelis. And not only is that the case in the substance, but what was laid out yesterday suggests that the Israelis are able to start immediately uh, implementing the vision and moving towards what they are promised by the plan, while at the same time the Palestinians will be given four years to meet certain preconditions in order to move towards what is promised them at the end of the process. What are the positions of Israelis and Palestinians on the plan? Well, as mentioned, the plan does lean very heavily in favor of Israeli positions. Uh, it provides Israel the ability to maintain sovereignty um, over all the settlements that currently uh, exist, the Jewish settlements that exist uh, in the West Bank. And not only that, uh, it is actually gives Israel the ability to annex those territories immediately and start implementing on that final vision. It also has given Israel full control uh, over an undivided Jerusalem as its capital and given Israel full security control um, throughout the West Bank. What that means for the Palestinians, of course, is that there is less for them to gain in terms of territory in a future Palestinian state. At the end of a four-year process, if the Palestinians meet certain conditions to include a demilitarized Gaza, ending support for terrorism, uh, implementing various uh, governance reforms, at the end of that process, uh, they could be looking uh, at a state that really um, is land that circles around these areas of Jewish settlement that have now been officially recognized as uh, being part of the state of Israel. Uh, needless to say, for the Palestinians, they did not see this plan as favorable towards uh, their interests. At the same time, on the Palestinian street, on some level, what you're seeing is a little bit of a shrug. For some Palestinians who are saying this has really been the de facto reality for a while, so this doesn't necessarily change anything about our daily reality. What about the international community response? So this is an important question. And typically when we say international community in this context, we're talking about those actors who've been working with the US, alongside the US over the past number of years, trying to bring about, to mediate a negotiated solution between the Israelis and Palestinians. Their responses have varied. You've seen a spectrum of tepid support for um, the US um, effort to put something forward and uh, bring about a new initiative. You've seen a reaffirmation of long-standing positions. And we've seen affirmative urging by the parties that, by the international community, that both parties, Israelis and Palestinians, see this plan as an opportunity to come to the table and negotiate. So we're gonna be watching over the next weeks and months to see how much capital any of these states want to place um, into pushing the parties towards that goal and working with the US to try to make this plan something that has legs as a um, diplomatic tool for spurring progress on this conflict. <laughs>